Hi, everyone. My name is Arlene Sibillo, and I'm part of the Davidson Institute team, and I'm your host for today. We're excited to be here with you this afternoon. And before we dive into this summer program information session, I wanted to go over a few housekeeping points so you have an idea of what to expect in this session. So this session is intended to run for 60 minutes. This session will include a presentation and be followed by a Q&A. We'll do our best to address as many questions as we can in the time allotted. We would like to point out that this is in a Zoom webinar setting and is designed so staff can share their video, audio, and screen, but attendees are in view-only mode. Please note that the chat feature of Zoom has been disabled. We do ask that you please direct all of your questions to the Q&A feature. We would hate to miss any questions submitted. We Please stay through to the end of the session. You will then be directed to our post-event survey to help us gather feedback on your experience. And of course, a recording of this live webinar will be available on the Davidson Gifted website within a week. So now diving right into the session, I'm pleased to introduce you to Avery Harris, our co-manager of the summer programs here at the Davidson Institute. I'll hand the presentation over to you now, Avery. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I am looking forward to getting to share more about our summer programs with everyone. So let's dive right into Davidson summer programs. Let's see. All right, so first off, we just have a few questions to make sure that we have a good idea of who's attending this webinar, get some more information from you all. So question number one, has your student attended a residential or overnight summer camp before? You can go ahead and select yes or no. This is not a determining factor for eligibility by any means, but something that we do like to keep tabs on. Um, it helps us determine the best way to support uh, attendees for the program. And so it's super helpful to have this information, um, something to have parents start thinking about right now before they apply to our programs. And we got those answers in, it looks like. 38% have attended uh, an overnight camp before, so that's a pretty good number. Um, of course, with this younger age group, we do anticipate that a lot of students probably haven't attended a residential camp before, and so that 62% is pretty expected, and sounds like they are hopefully ready to start that experience. Our next question is... Will uh, the age of your student for this summer, will they be between our age range of eight to 13? Maybe they're gonna be under eight, over 13. Um, this just helps us know again, who our target audience is for this webinar. And we can touch base since we do have some age eligibility requirements for our programs this summer. Awesome, that looks like a majority of everyone here has a student who was within our eight to 13 year old age range. If your student is not quite eight yet, but they will be eight during our program dates, then they are all set. And if your student will be over 13 by our program dates, we do have some other options for them that we recommend. So we um, encourage you to reach out to our website or to our email um, and we can help direct you in the right way. Our next question is, is your student currently a Davidson Young Scholar? This is a requirement for Davidson Summer Programs. And so if they're not quite a Young Scholar um, quite yet, we'll go ahead and talk about that application process and the deadline for that. And so that you can get all signed up um, and enrolled as a Young Scholar prior to our application opening for summer programs.
Wonderful. 82% have students who are already young scholars. And for the 18% of you whose students aren't quite enrolled as a young scholar yet, like I said, we'll touch base on that process um, and when that application closes to make sure that you are signed up in time to then apply for our summer programs. And then finally, our last question before we hop into it is, what are you most interested in learning more about? You are welcome to select all that apply. Um, please note though that we will be covering all of these topics. Um, just like to learn more about any specific questions that people might have or topics of interest. Wonderful. It looks like we have a pretty even mix of what people are looking to hear from. So that's great. Like I said, we'll be discussing uh, all of these topics at least a little bit. Um, and if you do have any other questions, like it says, please enter them in the Q&A box. We will be sure to cover those uh, as they come in. Now hopping into things. Let's begin with a quick look at our team. So like Arlene mentioned, I'm Avery. I'm a co-manager of Davidson Summer Programs alongside Gabby, who is also our co-manager. We've been doing this for quite a few years now. Um, we've recently stepped into these managerial roles and it is the highlight of our year. And so we are super excited to be gearing up and getting ready for summer 2025. And then new to this role, new to our team is our director of program operations, Scooby Meredith. He has a whole lot of background in working with the Davidson Academy, working with other summer programs. And so we're super excited to have him on our team this year and are um, looking to learn and help um, have him help us create a great program for your students. So before we hop into everything, just a quick overview of what we're going to talk about today. We're going to go over some eligibility, some of our staffing, what the schedule looks like in the student life. We'll dive into some of the academic workshops and seminars that we'll be offering. We'll talk about health and wellness, travel to and from camp. We'll talk about how to best prepare your student to come to Davidson Summer Programs. Finally, we'll talk about admissions process, and then we'll wrap it up with a quick Q&A. And so for sessions one and three, jumping right into it, we are offering um, sessions one and three for members of the Young Scholars Program. It's an exclusive program just for those students. It, we are located in uh, Reno, Nevada at the University of Nevada, Reno campus. And sessions one and three are exclusively for students ages eight to 11 during the program dates. So if your student is outside of that eight to 11 age range, they might be better suited for our sessions two and four. Um, program that we offer for 11 to 13 year olds. Sessions one and three are five days and four nights. And they are unique in that they allow students to navigate through three academic workshops. They also include daily field trips, social activities, and more. And we like to make sure that everyone has the opportunity to attend our program. So we do ask that students only apply for one of the sessions that they are age eligible for. So if your student is ages eight to 11, we ask that you select either session one or session three to apply to. So session one is offered, that's our starting in June, June 15th to the 19th. Uh, it is themed wilderness explorers, a walk on the wild side. And then session three is offered in early July, July 6th through the 10th and that is Cosmic Explorers, Astronaut Adventures in Space. And we'll talk a little bit more about what these things mean, um, but just keep them in mind that they don't determine your students' overall experience. Like I said, all, all students in both sessions one and three will rotate through academic workshops, attend field trips and social activities, but they will have a slightly more unique experience based on their theming. And so that's something to keep in mind if they have a really strong interest towards one of those themes. For sessions two and four, very similar to sessions one and three, it is exclusive for members of the Davidson Young Scholar Program located in Reno on the University of Nevada, Reno campus. However, they are exclusively for students ages 11 to 13 during the program dates, and they are five days and four nights. The biggest difference here, including other than our age difference, is that students will enroll in one single academic seminar that they will 
complete work towards completing a project at the end of the program. And so when they are applying, they'll keep an eye on which seminar is of the most interest to them and apply to that one specifically. On top of the academic seminars, they will attend daily field trips and social activities, just like sessions two, one and four, one and three. Uh, and then again, students are only permitted to attend either session two or four, depending on their age eligibility. We ask that you choose which one you're most interested in and apply to that one so that everyone has an opportunity to attend. So session two runs from June 23rd through the 27th. And this one is Discoverers of the Deep, Mysteries of the Ocean. And then session four runs July 14th through the 18th. And that is Digital Discoverers, the ups and downs of tech. And so we have some fun themes uh, for session two and four as well. Like I mentioned for one and three, they don't define the experience. However, uh, we we do intend to have some unique uh, bits and pieces uh, for students to attend as well. And then eligibility. So like we mentioned, these programs are exclusive to Davidson Young Scholars. So we'll will be checking to ensure that you are enrolled as a young scholar when you submit your application. Um, and then again, there are those age criteria. So eight to 13 years old, depending on the program that you're applying to. Um, and then with all of that, there are a few essential functions that we hope that all Davidson Young, Davidson summer program students uh, will be able to meet. And so the biggest one is being away from and out of contact with family members for the duration of the program. This is a residential program. We'll go into a little bit more, but we are a fully connected community, meaning that they will be fully um, out of contact with their family members for the duration of the program. Um, with that being a residential program, we do ask that students be able to share a room with at least one or two other participants and then reside in a community living environment. So we will be staying in the dorms and they will have two roommates that they will be sharing um, a bedroom with. And then in addition to that, have the common spaces that they function in um, throughout rest of the program. And then falling asleep without difficulty or with minimal support, i.e. the use of nightlights, music, things like that. We do have students who will bring um, MP3 players, things like that to help them fall asleep at night, but we do ask that they have some practice and, and some success in falling asleep with very minimal support. Um, with that, we ask that Davidson Summer Program students are able to function within a schedule that only allows for up to nine hours of sleep. We are pretty go, 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 and we've built in um, a good solid nine hours for students to be able to get some rest at night, but I do know that some students um, tend to get a little bit more sleep at home, which isn't um, abnormal, and usually those students can adjust to the nine hours of sleep pretty well, but if that's something that you think might be a little tricky with your student, maybe um, take that into consideration when the determining eligibility for the program. And then we ask that your students be able to follow direction from adults uh, other than a parent or a family caregiver. We will have our program assistants, which is just a fancy word for our camp counselors. We'll also have our leadership staff on site to uh, provide direction and aid students through the program. And so we ask that they be pretty used to receiving instruction from adults that maybe are they are unfamiliar with in their day-to-day -day life. We also, like I mentioned, are a fully connected community. So they, students have to be um, okay to go those five days without access to an electronic device. Um, that would be any device that has the ability to connect to the internet. So like I mentioned, an MP3 player, a standard iPod, those are okay. Um, we encourage those for helping students aid in sleeping or downtime. Um, however, if it does have the ability to send messages, connect to Wi-Fi, things like that, even if it is disabled, it is not permitted at camp. Um, we also ask that DSP students be able to ask for help if a problem or a concern arises. We do have those supports built in and we are checking in with students multiple times a day every day. Um, but if something does come up, making sure that they have the ability to seek out some support if needed. And then overall, operate independently under the support of supervision with regard, regard to self-care. That can mean things like hygiene, brushing your teeth in the morning, picking out your outfits, selecting healthy foods, and then emotional regulation, um, finding ways to regulate yourself within that busy, busy schedule. And so if you have any questions regarding eligibility, please reach out to us. We are happy to work with you and your students specifically to determine if our summer programs are a good fit for them. And we'd love to hear from you.
The benefits of Davidson summer programs are immense. They allow students with the opportunity to meet other young scholars and like-minded peers. They get to explore new and exciting academic topics. They also get to grow those independence uh, skills that they might not be able to grow back home um, under the support of parents. And with that, they get to build confidence. They're on their own for those five days. And so it's a really exciting opportunity for them to find their confidence and grow on that. And then on top of all of that, they get to experience living on a university campus, which can be really exciting, especially for the younger age range. Um, and of course, with all else having fun, we really pride ourselves on making this a great experience um, where they can continue to grow and learn, but also just have fun and be a kid. And so with that, our staff plays a very big role in creating those experiences for them where they can grow and they can have fun. And so we have a full summer team that provides 24-7 supervision as minors on the university campus. It's a requirement that they are being supervised 24-7, so we take that uh, very seriously. We hire program assistants. They're typically college age students, um, usually attend the University of Nevada, Reno. And we hire a lead program assistant to help give them support as staff members. And usually at DSP, we see a six to seven students per PA ratio. So it's a pretty good size that allows for some one on one connection. Um, and then on top of that, we have our seasonal leadership team that includes our residential residential supervisors. There are leadership team that is on site during the overnight. And so in addition to having program assistants on site at all times, including overnight, we have higher level leadership there as well to help handle anything that might come up in the nighttime. We also have our health supervisors. Those are That is a registered nurse who is with us all the time. She's there um, overnight on site, ready to provide any support that might be needed, help manage medications, things like that. And then aside from our seasonal team, we have instructors that we hire. They're typically Davidson Academy instructors who come in. They teach those workshops, the seminars. They're really good at working with a profoundly gifted population, and they provide that academic support. And then, like I said, our full-time leadership team, that's me, uh, Gabby, Scooby. We are there full-time um, to help support our staff and the students, connect with parents, throughout the summer. And so you'll probably be hearing a lot from us if you do decide to register your student for Davidson summer programs. And then we are very proud members of the American Camp Association. It's a national association that uh, works with summer camps to uphold different regulations, provide professional development and things like that. They have policies and standards that we do follow. And then they also have an annual conference. We're getting ready to head to Dallas in just a few months to attend that annual conference where we get to work with camp professionals from all across the country, continue to develop our behavior management techniques, our activities, uh, things that help keep the students engaged. And so we're really proud to be members of the American Camp Association. And if you're looking for more information on the benefits of summer camp and all that goes into summer camp, I do recommend checking out the ACA website. They can provide a lot of good information for you there as well. And one of the most exciting parts of summer is what are the students doing day to day? And so to dive into our schedule a little bit, each program will start with arrival day. And so students will travel to Davidson summer programs. They will be checked in. It is important to note that participants must be checked in and out of the program by a parent or a guardian or a designated alter alternate adult over the age of 25. And we'll dive into that a little bit more. Uh, but for additional information, please check out our travel page. Um, once they arrive to Davidson summer programs and they get all checked in, they'll head upstairs and they will set up their dorm room. That's usually a really exciting time. They get to meet their roommates for the first time, get to meet their program assistants, and it's usually pretty high energy. From there, we jump straight into orientation. And then we go into some fun team building, ice breaking activities, and they really get to know their peers around them. Days two through four are jam packed. We have breakfast in the morning starting at about 8 a.m. And then we go straight into our academic based field trip. Those run for about two and a half hours. And this year we have a few field trips coming up. They are still tentatively being planned, but we hope to take students to the planetarium as well as the wolf shop. That's our on-campus bookstore. We have taken students to the National Natural History Museum in the past. Um, they've gone to the makerspace. That's where they get to engage with 3D printing, make buttons, wood carving, things like that. We have a Discover Chemistry workshop where 
university students will come out and do demonstrations with all different types of chemistry uh, properties and things like that. And then we also have a workshop from a Davidson Academy instructor. We've done things like music workshops, improv workshops, an art workshop, and those are usually a pretty big hit as they're designed and guided um, explicitly for young scholars and profoundly gifted students. And then from our academic field trip, we go straight into lunch. Usually by 1130, students are starting to feel pretty hungry. And so we make sure that they get some lunch. After lunch from 1230 to 130, we have some dorm time. We have a game room set up in the dorms, which students are usually playing um, games with their new friends there. Uh, some students will use dorm time as a time to take a quick nap, do a quick reset, things like that. And then after dorm time, we have a quick outside uh, bunk meeting, it, which is essentially just a small group calm time. It's an opportunity for our program assistants to check in with their group as a whole. And that's about half an hour from 1.30 to 2. And then from 2 to 5, is our academic time. So they'll students will either be in their academic workshop or their seminar, depending on their session. And then from there, we have homework and outside time. Again, depending on the session, they'll have a small amount of homework that they'll do, and then they get to play outside or they'll just go straight to outside time. And then we have dinner from 5.30 to 6.30. After dinner, we go straight into our evening activity. These vary, again, year to year, but we're hoping to offer a arts and crafts or board games night this year. We usually offer a movie night, which is a nice, calm opportunity for students to watch a new movie. We offer water games, which is our big outside play with water balloons, um, different games like that. And they get to earn tickets to pie a program assistant in the face, which is always a big hit. We've done kickball. We do a mock rock competition, which is like a group talent show. And so it's a really great opportunity to build confidence and new friendships. We also offer a end of camp carnival, as well as our final night celebration that can be anything from a dance. Sometimes we do a dance or we do other big games and things like that to wrap up the camp. And then after our evening activities to help calm back down before bedtime, we do a bunk meeting. Again, that's just another small group opportunity for program assistants to check in with their students. And then we usually go into evening routines, dorm time until lights out is at nine o'clock. And so those students, we help them shower, get ready for bed, get their pajamas on, and then make sure that those lights are out and voices are off so that they can get some good sleep before we start all over again the next day. And then day five is our departure day. We have an earlier breakfast that day so that we can get all our fun closing activities in. So breakfast starts at 7 a.m. that day. And then from 7.45 to 9, we have a few different closing activities that can be anything from a slideshow. We sign thank you cards to thank all of our amazing staff members. T-shirt signing, we do offer students um, T-shirts when they first arrive and then they like to have them signed like a yearbook um, at the end of the program. There's also different recreational time to get those final moments of playing with their new friends in. And then for sessions two and four, that's when they will do their final seminar presentation as well to wrap up that project that they've been working on all week. And then from 10 a.m. to 11, that is when we say goodbye and parents will be checking out their students and heading home. And then student life. So one of the biggest parts of our program is that we are hosted on the University of Nevada Reno campus, which is super exciting for the students because they get to stay in the dorm rooms and have a real taste of that true college experience. And so in the dorm rooms, it is a shared room with two other students. Each student is provided their own bed, desk, and dresser. The beds are all single beds, so we don't have to worry about any bunk beds. And then we also provide linen, a full linen package. And so that includes a sheet, a blanket, a pillow, um, everything that they need to feel comfortable in their bed. Um, also located on our private dorm floor, we are typically on the top floor, which makes for some really good views. They also have a common room, a bunch of individual study rooms, our program assistants all stay on the same dorm floor. They're in their own private rooms, but they are right next door to your student in case they need anything. As well as our health supervisor, our nurse stays on the same floor, so she's there for easy access, as well as our staff room, which is where our leadership staff will congregate throughout the day um, and be available to students and staff as needed. Throughout the night at 
at DSP, we are on that locked floor. And so if students need anything, they know exactly where to find their program assistant. We label all those doors very clearly for them, as well as the nurse, nurse room. She usually puts up some sort of fun wrapping paper on her door. And we make sure to point it out to students at the very beginning so that they can see exactly where she is in case they do need anything in the middle of the night. And then dining, that's another one of the highlights for our students because it is buffet style. And so they get to have that real dining hall experience. Um, they get to go through the buffet style dining hall three times a day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We also offer snacks twice a day. We offer them during our field trip. We also offer during academic sessions so that they can make sure that they're not going too hungry in between meals. And then What's wonderful about working with the university is that they do have chefs who work with students all year long who are very used to accommodating special diets and food allergies. We actually have a whole food allergy specific section that um, I believe does not include the top nine common allergens. And so that's really reassuring for parents and the students who might be attending with food allergies. We do collect that information ahead of time and work directly with the dining hall staff to ensure that your students' um, special needs are being met. And then as always, students are welcome to bring their own snacks. We do, again, just ask that you keep in mind common allergens. And if they are bringing something with nuts in them, that they make sure to talk to their program assistant to confirm the best location for them to eat that um, in case they maybe have a roommate who has a nut allergy um, or if there's a common space um, that we have is nut free, we might have them eat that in the staff room where we can ensure that it's a nice safe area. In addition to that, we will take students to the wolf shop, which does have a little convenience store attached to it. And so students always love to pick out their own snacks. They get to go grocery shopping essentially um, and buy some goodies for the week. And so that is always an option as well when it comes to food. And then academics, that's a, a big part of our program. Um, so sessions one and three are that exploration workshop style and then sessions two and four are the project-based seminars. So for the exploration style workshops, all th there are three different academic sessions and all students will rotate through all three options. They'll go to one a day, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. These workshops are taught by Davidson Academy instructors, and they typically have fun and engaging topics. While we have yet to determine exactly which workshops will be offered for 2025, um, we can confidently say that there will be a variety of options stem, ranging from STEM choices to human, humanities, um, and typically students have found that all three uh, workshops are enjoyable, even if that's maybe not their preferred uh, subject matter. And so those will be, those workshop options will be put onto our website prior to the application opening, and we recommend checking out our academic page to learn more about that in the coming month. Um, but with all all the academic workshops, they do offer hands-on uh, learning, different activities, as well as overall exploration into that subject. And then for our project-based seminars, these are for our sessions two and four students. Uh, they will dive deep into one topic for the entire week. And so when applying to the program, we have students rank their top, their three options from most uh, favorite to least favorite, and then they will be enrolled into one single seminar. Just like these workshops, they are taught by Davidson Academy instructors, and they will receive a brief evaluation following the seminar just to go over how they did in the program, what they worked on uh, throughout the week, and things like that. And students will be issued a Davidson Academy laptop to utilize during that seminar time and if needed during the homework time. So they will have that brief half an hour to an hour of homework every day just to continue working on that project so that they can be ready to go for their final presentation on departure day. And then just like the workshops, they are hands-on, fun, engaging topics. We have not quite nailed down exactly which ones we're going to offer this year, but again, it will be a range um, in topics from STEM to humanities. And so we do recommend checking those out prior to our application opening in December in case, um, and reading through the different instructors that we offer in the different course descriptions to determine which one uh, your student would like to apply for. Um, 
And then overall, the academics are pretty challenging at DSP. We cater them explicitly towards profoundly gifted students. And so with that, we make sure they provide they are provided hands-on opportunity learning opportunities. They develop unique classroom skills. Being surrounded by like-minded peers is usually um, a unique experience for students as many times they're not necessarily receiving that back home. And so that's a great opportunity for students to be challenged inside the classroom. And then additionally, there are TAs and staff checking in with them. So if something is maybe a little challenging or students have some questions, they are surrounded by support at all times, um, both inside and outside the classroom, to make sure that they're having a good su successful experience at Davidson summer programs. And so health and wellness, that's another super important factor to make sure that we have a good time at our summer programs. And so before the program even starts, we collect a whole lot of information from families to ensure that we are best equipped to work with their students. So that includes a health history form that takes a detailed um, documentation of your student's health history, anything from allergies to special treatments they may have received. We also select uh, collect insurance cards. And so we take the front and back of your insurance card so that if anything does happen, we are able to provide that. Um, as needed, as well as a physical exam that's been completed within the last two years of your session start date to ensure that um, all of your health information is up to date. We also collect immunization records. We follow the Nevada state um, schooling immunization requirements. And so we have those linked on our website and we typically just go through and make sure that students are meeting those as required. And then we also collect a medication form. And so any medications that your student is taking prior to um, the program or will be taken during the program, we ask that you jot those down in our form. They are then all reviewed by our health supervisor to ensure that we can provide the best care for your student while they are with us. And then day to day, went the wrong way. Our day-to-day -day programming um, does include a few um, different health op uh, safety opportunities. And so we do a health screening upon check-in. That's um, a quick temperature, go over any symptoms that your student might be experiencing to ensure that everyone is coming into our program um, at 100% and feeling healthy. We also collect all that medication, except for rescue medication. So things like an inhaler or an EpiPen, we have students keep on them. If your student's not comfortable carrying that around, they are welcome to have their program assistant carry that for them. Um, all other medication though is collected by our nurse and kept in our locked nurse room. And our health supervisor will distribute those daily to students as needed following um, any protocol that is provided by parents. And so travel to and from our program. Davidson does not provide airport supervision or a sh shuttle service. So parents are responsible um, for checking their student in and out and for all transportation to and from the program. As I mentioned earlier, an alternate adult over the age of 25 can be designated for a student to be signed in or out with. And that's just a form that you'll complete ahead of time, letting us know that you uh, verified that a certain adult can check your student in and out. Um, check-in will run from 12 to 2 p.m. on that session's check-in day and check-out will run from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. on that check-out day. Um, I will have the link posted um, to our travel page in the chat right now. So if you would like a direct link to that page to read more about our check-in and check-out procedures, please see the chat now. And then for communication during the program, uh, Davidson, as I mentioned, is a fully connected community, meaning students cannot bring cell phones or other devices that can connect to Wi-Fi or send communication inwards or outwards to Davidson summer programs. Um, but our Davidson staff, we are sure to connect with families as needed. Um, we will reach out with periodic updates via email. We send out a camp-wide newsletter most nights um, detailing what we're doing at camp, including a link so that you can check out photos of your student. Um, we also will reach out in the event that your child needs medical care and our health team determines that you should be notified of that. That could be anything from maybe your student got a scrape on a field trip and we wanted to let you know that we've put a bandage on that, or maybe they have a headache and they need some medication and we're just making sure that you're aware of what's going on. Um, we'll also reach out to you if it 
becomes apparent that your insight might be uh, helpful for behavior management. Sometimes parents have those tips and tricks that we don't quite know for their individual student. And so if you can just let us know the best way to work with your student, that can always be super helpful in certain situations. And then if an unexpected event occurs that causes us to drastically change from the program schedule, or if we have to change location for some reason, we reach out to parents and let them know that there's gonna be a shift in that scheduling. Um, as always, though, we do like to say that no news is good news during our program. So if you're not hearing from us, that means your student is safe, successful, and having a great time. And so just keep that in mind um, that you likely won't hear from us and that that's a good thing. Um, so preparing your student for Davidson summer programs. There are a whole lot of resources that we have on our parent resources page, and that link will also be posted in our chat right now. So if you want to go check that out, um, you can follow that direct link. Otherwise, you can find that directly on our website. And that has a whole lot of resources from our health and medical care, working with homesickness and kid sickness, um, our parent handbooks that'll be coming soon for the 2025 season, as well as the 2025 packing list. And then again, that travel page that can provide you with some more information regarding check-in and check-out times. We also have our policies listed, our policies on that 24-7 supervision, our communicable illness plan and policies, again, our fully connected electronic device policy and communication if you want to read more about that as well. And so at this point, beyond eligibility, you might be wondering, is the program a good fit for my student? Keeping in mind that it is five days and four nights, it is on uh, a good opportunity for students to test out uh, that independence in a quick but fun environment. Um, students typically are a good fit if they're expressing that they want to attend and they are seeming interested in the program, we recommend checking out the website with your student, um, even showing them this video. And if that's something that gets them excited, then the program might be a good fit for them. Um, again, they will be sharing a room with at least one or two other participants. And so making sure that they're excited and ready to have a roommate is a good sign that it's a good fit. It's also that fully connected community with no cell phones. So if your student is a little nervous about not having communication or being away from their cell phone, that's definitely something to talk through with them um, before determining whether or not the program's a good fit, as well as being sure that they can follow direction from other adults other than their parents and familiar caregivers. That way we can make sure that everyone is safe and on schedule, um, and then also operate independently under that supportive supervision. Again, making sure that they can brush their teeth, they can shower on their own, making sure that they can pick out meals that are healthy and nourishing for their body. They can regulate their emotions if they start to feel anxious or nervous. Again, they will have support there the whole time, um, but making sure that they can do the first few steps on their own. And then again, fall asleep without, the diffic uh, without difficulty or with minimal support. Like I mentioned, that MP3 player, um, some students will listen to podcasts. Those are great options for them as long as they don't connect to Wi-Fi. Um, knowing that they only have about nine hours to sleep each night. And so we try to get them off to sleep pretty quickly um, and with minimal support. And so how, how else can you help your student prepare for Davidson summer programs? A great way to start is by practicing overnights away from home. That could be a sleepover with a friend or with another family member, anything away from their actual home. Uh, continue to work on those essential functions. Transitions are a really big one since we are such a go, go, go environment, making sure that they're able to put down their game and move on to the next activity. Things like that can be really helpful when preparing for camp, as well as making sure that they know how to brush their own teeth, making sure that they can get their pajamas on and get into bed on their own. Those are great things to practice ahead of time. Again, reviewing the website and the handbook together once it becomes available can help them feel really prepared and in the know um, and feel like they have some control over the summer camp and what the environment that they're about to go into. It's also super important as parents to make sure that you're continuously sending a consistent and positive message about camp. Um, if you're nervous, they're going to feel nervous. And so making sure that you're showing your excitement for them will really help their excitement continue to grow and make sure that they have a good time at camp. 
um, as well as making sure that you show confidence in your students' abilities, making sure that you're supporting them the whole way and letting them know that they're going to have a great time uh, will go really far once they're actually independent and doing it on their own. Um, including them in packing and preparing their things can be hugely beneficial. It can always be a little scary uh, showing up to camp and opening your suitcase and not knowing what's in there. And so help, having them help pick out their outfits, making sure that they put maybe their favorite blanket or stuffed animal in there, those things can be really, really helpful um, once they arrive at camp. And then for students in sessions two and four, those are our seminar pro our seminar uh, academics. We suggest that making sure you practice good homework and study habits ahead of time, that can be super helpful. Like I said, they'll have about 30 minutes to an hour of homework each night. And so, um, if they're a student who typically doesn't have a lot of homework, helping them prepare for that, um, making sure that they can sit down and work independently will be a great way to help your student prepare for the program. And then our 2025 application process. The application is for a first come first serve basis for eligible students and decision notifications will be sent out within two weeks of an ap application completion. And so once you send in that application, we'll go through and confirm that you your student is a young scholar. Um, and then from there, we will review the application for completion, make sure that you've selected the correct session for your student's age. Once your application has been confirmed for completion, we will, we will send you a completion notification email that lets you know your completion date and that it is in the review process. From there, uh, decision notifications will be sent out within two weeks. There are about 63 spots in each session, and if we do hit capacity, any re remaining uh, incoming applications will be put on a wait list, and if that does happen and you are waitlisted for your preferred session, uh, please don't worry too much. Every year we do see movement off the wait list and students do get into their preferred session. And so once you receive that acceptance notification, you will have 24 hours to submit a deposit to hold your student spot. And that will secure their spot until uh, the program starts and we'll start having forms um, available for you to fill out after that. And so we really do hope that you'll um, We'll see your student this summer. Uh, we will continue to send updates in our summer program newsletter. And so if you're not already registered for that, please check out our website. There's a link to register for our summer programs newsletter directly. But we'll also be sending updates in the Wednesday post um, that you receive as a Young Scholar family. If you have any other questions, though, please feel free to give us a call. Our phone number is 775-852-3483. And make sure you select option number two to get to our summer programs department. Or you can shoot us an email at summer at davidsongifted.org. For Young Scholar applications, if you're not already a Young Scholar, make sure you get that in by the November 1st deadline. And if you have any questions specifically on that application process, please feel free to shoot them an email at ysapplications at davidsongifted.org. So that's all we got for now. We'll go ahead and hop into our, uh, our Q&A if we have any questions out there. And so we have a great question about tuition for this upcoming summer. We have not currently released our tuition quite yet, um, but our previous uh, programs for this age range um, had tuition that ranged between 14 and 1700, and we expect our 2025 rates to be comparable. And so once that's released um, in the coming months, it'll be up on our tuition and fees page. We recommend you check that out. And if you have any questions, please go ahead and shoot us an email. Um, this one asks, will students be arranged with other kids in the same or different ages for the dorms? And that's a great question. So we typically try to group students with kids of the similar age. We do accept roommate requests. And so if your student does want to room, um, if your student's eight years old and they want to room with someone who's nine or 10, um, please feel free to send in that roommate request once that form becomes available. Um, otherwise, we will typically group them um, with students of a similar age. We also utilize a student life survey that we send out and that we have the student fill out directly that touches on things like how, um, 
how cold they like the room, um, maybe their sociability level. Are they a social butterfly or do they perform, prefer more alone time? Um, do they wake up super early? Do they go to bed a little bit later? And so we try to group students, again, of similar age with similar interests. And so hopefully uh, that allows students to be with roommates um, that they can really click with. And then, see a lot of questions regarding our family retreat. That's a great question. Um, that is a little bit separate from our summer camps. And so this session is focusing just on our summer camps. Um, however, if you do have any questions regarding our family retreat, please reach out to our events team. They can be reached at events at davidsongifted.org org um, and they'll be happy to answer any questions regarding our annual summit as well as the family retreat if you have specific questions about either of those programs let's see um again like i mentioned um, this one's asking for uh how much of the deposit is for session four our tuition rates haven't been sent out quite yet um so the deposit will be based off of the tuition. Once that becomes available, it'll be on our website. We'll also be sending out an update via our summer newsletter and the Wednesday post um, so that you can make sure that you're seeing that information as soon as it comes out. And it will be available prior to our application opening on December 2nd. We have a question asking if any children um, are afraid for their first year and yeah, that's something that we definitely do experience. Um, a lot of students will miss home and they'll maybe struggle that first couple hours, but usually by the time uh, nightfall hits that first night, they have gotten into it. They've started making some friends. They're having a really good time. And oftentimes they forget about those jitters pretty quickly. Uh, however, if a student is continuing to struggle, we do work with our program assistants. Um, we have a multi-day training where we talk a lot about working with students who are missing home and how to best aid um, in that experience. And we have a lot of tips and tricks uh, that have worked really well over the years. And so if your student is a little hesitant, again, working with them um, on how to best prepare for the program, and then also knowing that our staff is here to support them during the program if they are feeling a little nervous those first few days. What time of the day does the application become available? That's a great question. And so typically our application will open up um, early morning. We'll go ahead and set um, an exact time for that as we get a little bit closer, uh, but it'll be early morning um, Pacific time on December 2nd. Will students uh, be grouped with the same gender together? So in their dorm rooms, we do base, uh, we do house students based on gender. And so we collect that information upon registration. We'll house based on gender. However, in their program assistant group, that's a small group of about six students that um, connect with one specific program assistant. Those are typically mis mixed gendered. Um, to give students the opportunity to connect with all of their peers um, of all genders. And so they will be housed in their specific dorm room with students of the same gender. However, they have opportunity to connect with other students um, and the whole camp throughout the time. This one asks, can you please give some more information on how to evaluate the applicants? Would you give priority to students who have been to camp previously? And so, we are going to operate on a full first come first serve for eligible students. So if your student is eligible they um, and they apply and there's space in the program, they will receive space in the program. Uh, it is not a requirement that students have attended another camp previously in order to attend Davidson summer programs. And so if you do have that experience, um, it can be beneficial for the student uh, to maybe not feel quite as nervous or have some more understanding about what a summer camp looks like, but not a requirement for them to attend. And so that is not how we will be determining eligibility. Um, just something that's helpful for us to collect during the application process so that we can utilize uh, throughout camp whether or not they've been somewhere else before. And that looks like that's all the questions we have. Oh, one more actually just came in real fast. And so asking, can 11 year old student attend two camps? We do ask that 11 year olds as well as all other students pick their um, most preferred session and apply only to that one so that we can ensure that all students are getting the opportunity to attend camp. We do have, um, 
fairly limited space uh, in our programs. And so making sure that you find whichever one works best for your student, depending um, on their uh, desired academic challenge and things like that um, for 11 year olds, determining whether or not the workshop or the seminar is a better option. Um, and then from there, picking whichever session uh, interests them the most. If you have specific questions about whether or not your 11 year old should choose one session over the other, please feel free to shoot us an email. We're happy to help um, talk through whether or not uh, one session might be a better fit for them. Um, and so please feel free to reach out at summer at davidsongifted.org. And that looks like that's all our Q&As. I believe some will continue to be answered um, through the type feature, but for now, um, that is our summer programs uh, session. And so if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us via phone call or email. We do look forward to seeing your student's application when it opens on December 2nd. Thank you, Avery. We actually have one question in the chat. I'm just going to go ahead and read it out to you. Um, yep. And it is, will you intervene if a student seems to have an infectious disease? Will you test infectious students for respiratory infections? Yeah, that's a great question. So we, I do recommend uh, reading through our communicable illness and uh, disease plan and policy, we do um, have our health supervisor, our registered nurse, continuously monitoring students. Um, our program assistants are trained to uh, be able to pinpoint any symptoms that might be coming up, report back to our health supervisor in case that student's not even um, aware that they might be feeling sick quite yet. And so if we do see that coming up and it is determined that the best course of action is to test a student for any sort of communicable illness, we will be doing that. We also have CM isolation rooms set aside on our dorm floor in case the student is sick um, and they need to be isolated before they can be picked up by a parent. And so, like I said, please um, feel free to read through that communicable illness plan it has some more information in detail about our step-by-step -step process. Um, but as always, safety and health is our top priority. And so um, that is definitely something that we continue to update as new information becomes available. Awesome. Thank you, Avery, for sharing this information about the Davidson Summer Programs and addressing everyone's questions. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Please remember to do the survey after the session closes. If you would like to view the session again, the recording will be posted on the Davidson Gifted website, and it will also be available in our expert video library on DMC. Uh, thank you again, Avery. Thank you, everyone, for joining us, and we hope you have a great rest of your afternoon.